I've read literally every single study on note taking to help law students study more effectively and efficiently. And it turns out we're all studying wrong. Here's the problem. The way that most of us approach our note taking goes a little bit like this. We will go up to our lectures, we will frantically try to scribble down everything the lecturer is saying, and then we'll leave feeling a little bit frustrated that we didn't quite understand everything. And then we'll pop to the library having picked up our pumpkin spice latte from Costa or Starbucks or wherever, and then try to read everything we can about that topic writing copious amounts of notes to fill every single nook and cranny. We may even think that we've got our head around things at this point, but the chances are that a couple of days later, we're going to have forgotten most of it, and we're gonna feel pretty overwhelmed come exam time. This was exactly how I felt during my first year at university, but I couldn't quite put my finger on what I was doing wrong. I was attending all my lectures, I was doing all my reading, I was writing loads of notes on every single topic. It turns out that my major flaw here was that I was spending all my time as a hunter rather than a farmer. In other words, I was spending all my time hunting for different pieces of knowledge rather than cultivating that knowledge and actually trying to learn the law. So to explain why being a farmer is better than being a hunter, I want to show you the science behind effective note taking before taking a closer look at exactly how we should be taking notes at law school. Now I noticed something pretty surprising having read all of these papers. None of them actually confirm whether or not taking notes is a good thing. Instead, they all just start with the basic premise that yes, taking notes is good, without really giving any source or further information as to how they came up with that information. And then they go on to analyze a very specific note-taking technique. This then leads to the obvious confusion as to what note-taking technique is best and whether or not we should be taking notes in the first place. For example, one of the most common questions that these studies analyze is the question of, is it better to take more notes or less notes? So that's basically the classic quantity versus quality debate. Now, it does seem on the face of it that taking more notes is better than taking less notes. Like, if we take a look at Kira's study on note-taking functions and techniques, he found that those students that took more notes were likely to perform better than those that took less notes when later tested on that topic. In a similar study by Bui, I think his name is, he took a group of 76 students, split them in half with one group focused on the quality of the notes and another focused on the quantity of the notes. And when tested immediately afterwards, those that wrote more notes outperformed those who took less notes. But, and this is a massive but, these results do not show that taking more notes is actually better than taking less notes. For example, in Kira's study, it actually concludes that the useful thing about note-taking isn't the amount of notes that we take or even the note-taking process itself, but it's the reading of those notes. And so the more notes that we take, the more we have to read, the more we're able to read, the better we're ultimately going to perform on the test. And this is where our confusion just tends to build up and up and up because this study is also not saying that reading our notes is a useful revision technique. All it's saying is that if we take lots of notes and read those notes before a test after a specific period of time, that is a better technique to use than taking less notes under the same conditions. So what's wrong with Bowie's study? Well, it turns out that taking loads of notes works really well when we're tested immediately after taking those notes, but it's far less effective than quality notes when there's a delay before we're tested. And and there's a ton of studies backing this up. Like, I don't know, take Rodiger's study on the power of testing memory, for example. He found that the same study technique could be the best one when tested after five minutes, but quite literally the worst one when tested after a week. The important point then is not that note-taking is bad, but that we need to be using note-taking and using particular techniques that are focused on our specific goals, which is usually for some sort of exam or assessment that's gonna happen many days, months, or weeks after we first learn the information, which is precisely why we can't just keep hunting for information. We really need to cultivate our knowledge like a farmer. So then, what can we learn from all of these studies to take effective notes as a law student? Well, what I've learned is that there's three stages of note-taking that we need to be aware of to optimize our learning of the law and cultivate that knowledge. One, preparation, two, process, and three, product. So first, we prepare ourselves for taking notes. The idea here is that we should already have some sort of structure for our learning before we begin the note-taking process. And the way that I quite like to do this is that before I attend a lecture or, I don't know, read a textbook, for example, I will have a document in front of me and I'll write down all the headings for that particular topic and all the subheadings under each heading. And this gives me a really nice overview of what the topic is about and also allows me to see how each individual section fits into the bigger picture. Like, let's say that I'm about to attend a lecture on I don't know, the content requirements of an easement, the first thing I'd think about is what are my headings going to be for this particular topic? And I'd probably say it's going to be the four requirements that are laid out in the Ellenborough Park judgment. So I'll write these four headings, 
on my document and leave a space between each heading so that I can write my notes when I'm in the lecture. Also, if we've got just a little bit of time, we should read a summary of the topic that we're about to learn, as this primes us nicely for effective note taking because we're already kind of semi familiar with the topic. This whole thing takes literally like 10 minutes and it makes our note taking a million times more effective. Okay, so now process. So cognitively, when we're taking notes, we're relying on our working memory, which is useful for both comprehension, that is our understanding of a particular topic, as well as our production, that is the note taking process itself. Now, due to the limited capacity of a working memory, we're only really able to do one thing or the other. In other words, we can either understand the topic or write everything down. And this leads students to do one of two things, either frantically scribble everything down in the lecture, or they just sit there, don't really take any notes, but try to take it all in both of which are suboptimal for effective learning. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is to find a note-taking strategy that strikes an effective balance between both understanding and comprehension, which leads me on to the Cornwell method. And this is a beautiful note-taking strategy designed to boost focus, capture key insights, and also allow us to think critically about the law as we begin taking our notes. And this is basically all achieved through the structure of the page. So on the right hand side, we've got our key headings and under each of these key headings, we've got like one to three bullet points, which outline our key insight of those particular headings. Then in the left hand side, we've got a small margin here, which essentially outlines kind of our key questions, some key words that we're interested in exploring and also our own critical thoughts. So we're actually analyzing the information as we learn it. Then at the bottom of the page, we have a small section to write a one to three sentence summary of the entire lesson. I absolutely adore this note taking method because it makes our notes learning focus, which I guess is the whole point of taking notes at university. Finally, once we've taken our notes using the Cornell method, we can employ the SOAR framework, which stands for Summarize, Organize, Analyze and Review. And this just takes our notes to the next level. And it's something that most people just do not do. So the first thing that we need to do is to summarize. And the idea here is that we take our notes that we took using the Cornell method and turn them into a more substantial, fully fleshed out set of notes. And it's really, really important that we do this as soon as we can after our initial learning of the topic due to something known as Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve which basically tells us that the sooner that we try to recall the information after we initially learn it, the more likely it is to be encoded into our long-term memory. The next step is to organize. And really what we're trying to do here is structure our notes into a really logical and sensible format, and then flesh out those notes using things like textbooks, cases, and journal articles. And what I really quite like to do at this stage is also to essentially create two sets of notes. One which is my quantity set of notes, which is everything I could find about that topic, but also, and crucially, creating a like higher quality set of notes too, which I can easily revise from later down the line. And this is called progressive summarization. And I've talked more about this particular concept in this video over there. So if you want to find out more about that topic, then make sure you check out that video. Third, analyze. And this is where we take our notes from a second class level to a first class level. And really the point here is that we want to inject our own critical thoughts into our notes. So we want to draw comparisons between different areas of the law, we want to agree or disagree with different critics, and we just don't want to sit on the fence, basically. This leads me on to the final stage of the SOAR framework, which is review. And the point here is that when we're taking notes at uni, it's usually for some form of exam or assessment later down the line. So we want to make sure we're taking notes to effectively help us revise that information when it gets to that exam, assessment or test later down the road. One really effective strategy for review is self-test or retrieval practice. And this is something that I've talked extensively about before in this video over here. So make sure you check that one out as well. But the idea is basically that we need to use some sort of flash guard or self-testing process so that we're regularly reviewing the content, we're able to identify our weaknesses and flesh out our notes where we find those weaknesses too. So yeah, that's it. That's pretty much my whole note-taking process from preparation, process and product in the SOAR framework. And if you've got any questions at all about any of it, then please drop a question below or make sure you check out my other videos on the channel too. Anyway, that's all for now and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.